Good morning, Grade 8. Today I'm going to do a lesson with you on the four factors of production, which is under the entrepreneurship um, theme. Okay, now there are four factors of production. Entrepreneurship, capital, natural resources, and labor. These are the things that you need to start a business. I'm going to just talk about those four. We're also going to do the remuneration for each of those factors of production. Okay, so I've got um, notes here that I'm going to talk from um, so that I know that I stay on track. Okay, so it is important that you know the definition for capital. Okay, what is capital? Capital is the money that the entrepreneur takes to start a business. It is either his own money or money that he gets from the bank. So it's either his capital or it's borrowed capital that he borrows from the bank. So that is capital. Okay, so there are three types of capital that we actually get. The first one is your own capital, borrowed capital, and capital goods. Okay, so these are the types of capital that you use to start a business and to run a business. Okay, now I'm quickly going to define a few of them. Okay, so capital, as the definition, I'm going to read it from the notes, is financial input required to produce goods and serv services. So in other words, to put it easier, it's the money you use to produce goods and to deliver services. That is capital. Then we have own capital. Now, the definition is capital provided from an entrepreneur's own pocket. So it's your own money that you use to start a business. And then we have borrowed capital. And that is capital borrowed from a financial institution. Now, what is a financial institution? It's like the bank. Okay, and there's some people, if they can't get a loan from the bank, they resort to micro lending. So please make a note of that word, micro lending. Now, they, they are also known as the loan sharks because their interest rates are quite higher than, um, than banks. But the rate at which you need to pay that back is quite big. It's, it's, it's more than banks. Okay, so then we have capital goods. Okay, now, what is capital goods? It's like land and buildings, equipment, everything, land and buildings, equipment, and those kind of things that are used to produce goods and services. So that is capital goods, land and buildings, and equipment that you use to deliver goods and services. Okay, so... Those are your capital. Now, the next um, concept I'm going to talk about, the second factor of production is labor. Okay, now, as we know, labor is the people that work for you. Now, there are, cert there are three types of categories that laborers can be categorized under. Skilled labor, non-skilled, and semi-skilled labor. Okay, now, skilled labor is obviously your doctor's, and your, um, you, your professional people, like doctors and lawyers, people that have degrees, that studied to become what they are, that has experience and a degree. It's um, like your doctors, your engineers, your um, teachers. The teachers also has a degree. Anyone that has a degree that are skilled. Okay, then we have our semi-skilled workers. Now, semi-skilled workers is like your cleaners that... Um, it, it's labor is with, without um, a degree or training. Okay, so I'm going to quickly give you some um, examples. Unskilled workers is like people that do not have a degree. They do not have um, certificates or diplomas. Sometimes these unskilled laborers only have grade nine or they only have they have matric most of them but they, they don't have a degree they don't have a tertiary education degree and some of them only have grade four or grade five now those are the unskilled workers and that is like your garden workers your cleaners the people that work on the farms etc okay so those are your unskilled laborers but they still form part of the human resources of your company okay then 
we have our semi-skilled workers. Okay, semi-skilled labor refers to people who have some training in a certain field. So they've got some training. That is like your cashiers, your security guards, and your taxi drivers. They are semi-skilled, okay? And then just to get back to skilled laborers, those are people that have formal qualifications, such as a degree or a diploma, and that is like your doctors, your engineers, your accountants, etc. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to um, get to the remuneration for each factor of production. Okay, now let's quickly look at your natural resources. Like now, as we know, the definition of natural resources is it's resources that comes directly from nature as raw materials. For example, gold and coal. But your land and your buildings must be built on a piece of land. And that is also seen as natural resources. Okay, so when you buy land in order to build on it, that is seen as natural resources. Okay, and the water you use is also natural resources. Okay, then we let's quickly look at the definition of entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship, an entrepreneur as we did, as you did in grade seven, is a person that can turn an idea into a business opportunity. Now, only if there's a need for your product and if your, if your idea is feasible, then you can say that you can turn an idea into an opportunity. So an entrepreneur has the ability to take all the, the factors of production and make a business out of it. So I'm going to quickly explain that concept to you. We know that there are four factors of production. The first factor is actually an entrepreneur. Because without an entrepreneur, you cannot start a business. Okay, then secondly, the entrepreneur needs capital. That's your second factor of production. Without capital, the entrepreneur can't start a business. Then the entrepreneur needs natural resources, whether it's a piece of land, whether it's a building that is built on a piece of land that needs to rent, um, he needs that in order to run a business. And then if you, if you make something, uh, let's say you're, you want to um, produce fruits, then the fruits will be your natural resource or anything that comes from nature will be your natural resource. Then the fourth form of ownership, uh, uh, factor of production, is then um, your laborers. You need workers, semi-skilled, skilled and unskilled workers to work for you and to help you run your business. Now, Steve, um, Richard Branson has said in many of his books that your human resources, your people, the laborers, is actually the most important resource of a business. And you really need to look after your human resources. Remember that for one day when you have a business. Okay, so first we have the entrepreneur. So the definition of the entrepreneur is basically he takes all the factors of production, natural resources, capital and laborers, and he puts it together and he makes a business out of it. That is basically what an entrepreneur is. Okay. Then I'm going to go on to the remuneration of each factor of production. What does the word remuneration mean? Okay. Remuneration is a payment or a reward for something that you do, a service that you deliver, okay, or a product that you deliver. Okay, so if I'm a teacher and I get a salary, that salary is my remuneration. If you, if you work in the advertising industry or in the um, marketing industry, you get remuneration in the forms of salaries, but sometimes they give you remuneration for services well done. Let's say you've reached your, your target or something, they give you remuneration for that. That's to motivate you. So the, the purpose of remuneration is to motivate um, the workers to do the work. But then there's also remuneration for each of the four factors of production. There's remuneration for the entrepreneur or motivation. There's remuneration for land and buildings or your natural resources. There's remuneration for capital. And there's remuneration for obviously the laborers. Okay, now I'm going to look at all four of those types of remuneration for the factors of production. Okay. So now, 
Um, for capital, the remuneration is interest. Okay, so if you put your if you put capital in the bank, money in the bank, and you keep it there, and you want to save, then the bank pays you interest. Because you are saving. So you, let's say you put a million rand into the bank and you keep it there and you don't touch it. Then the bank, as a deposit, then the bank pays you interest. So then in 10 years time, the million rand will be worth more. Okay. If somebody comes to you when you're a business owner and they borrow money from you, let's say they borrow a million rand from you, the entrepreneur, then you will say, that's fine. I'll, I'll borrow you money, but you have to pay it back to me at a specific interest rate. So then you get your million rand back plus the remuneration of interest. So then your million rand is worth more. So that's the remuneration for capital. Okay, then the next one, remuneration for labor, is obviously wages and salaries. Now, what's the difference between these two? Wages is weekly and it's usually cash. So if somebody works for you, um, let's say Mondays and Thursdays, they, and they work three hours each day, you pay them cash at the end of each week in the form of wages. Salaries is usually paid at the end, paid at the end of the month. Okay, and it's usually not paid in cash. It's usually paid via bank or EFT. Okay, then um, we've got your natural resources, which is payments for the use of natural resources is done in the form of rent. For example, renting land. Okay, so remember, natural resources, everything that comes from, um, that's delivered in the natural form from earth. So if you build a building on a piece of land, the remuneration for that will be rent. If I stay in a building and I didn't buy it, then I pay rent every month. Okay, so remember it that way. So natural resources is rent. Then we have entrepreneurship. What is the remuneration for an entrepreneur? What motivates an entrepreneur to start a business? Obviously, the profit that you make from the goods and the services. Okay. So those are the remuneration for the different forms of ownership. Okay, and that is the lesson on the factors of production. Please go through it and I'm going to attach an activity that you can do and to make sure that you understand the work. Please stay safe and I hope to see you soon. Goodbye.